G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're running through part two of my uh, tracking dynamo usage uh, mini series. So in the first part we looked at how to take journal files and today we're combining them. Um, and then the reason why we're doing this is that we're leading on to Power BI where we can visualize the data and actually see from a high level how our dynamo usage is going in an office for example. So today we're combining all the log files into just one file so that Power BI can read that file. Um, and just a reminder for why we're doing this, we're trying to prove the success of Dynamo, so forming a business case, uh, in order to secure research and development time from executives um, so that we're not seen to be wasting time by scripting, which is a common issue with Dynamo in offices and culture in general. Um, and we're looking to track users and identify trends as well. So say, what are the most popular scripts? Um, which scripts have never been used before? Uh, just high level metrics to really understand how successful Dynamo is in our office. And the methodology from the last part we looked at is that we've got all our Dynamo scripts and we've embedded custom nodes into each one. So there's a single node and it's being told to write a log file to a single location on the server in a folder. And today we're looking at taking those log files and using a Dynamo script to combine them into one single Excel file that Power BI can read. Um, we're using some custom nodes today as well. So you will need a package called Bumblebee, which is available on the package manager. And it contains these three nodes that we'll be using. So reading Excel data and then building Bumblebee data as it's called and feeding that Bumblebee data into a node to write Excel data. And the reason we're using this instead of the read and write Excel functions in Dynamo is because you can actually maintain uh, data formatting this way. So if you have columns with custom width and header rows, um, this won't wipe out that data, but by default Dynamo will remove that data unless you use a custom package like this. Uh, so that's why. Um, so without further ado, we'll jump into Dynamo and we'll start building our script. So you recall from the last session, we started building log files in our company. So I've just copied a whole bunch of log files um, from you know my everyday script generator. Um, so I'll just show you an example of what they look like. So there's six columns and you may recall what they were. So the first one is a date and timestamp with a little apostrophe at the front to prevent it from form formatting itself into date time. Uh, the one after that is who, uh, the one after that is the script, and then the document it was run from. Keep in mind that if you are working in an unsaved project, it will be empty. So we're gonna need to manage that in our script as well. So we need to replace nulls with a unsaved project field. Um, so we know when we're running a script on a project that isn't saved. Um, and from there, you can say whether you're testing and also how much time you've saved as a measure um, from the overall hours that you've worked. Um, so, you know, 0.005 is of an hour. So it isn't much, but it's still a few minutes that will add up in the end to the big picture. Um, I typically am quite pessimistic with how much time Dynamo saves. I try not to say, oh, I saved four hours, when in reality I know I probably only saved someone, say, 20 minutes or maybe even five minutes. Um, you may as well be honest, otherwise your, your numbers will get highly inflated and you end up saying that you've saved, you know, 5,000 hours, which is ridiculous because then it's like, why aren't we all going home at three o'clock every day? So be realistic. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine them into a log file ultimately. So the log file has formatting already set up. So I've set the column widths to suit a comfortable reading width. Um, and then I've just got a header row up here. So the way we build our script will maintain the structure of this table. It will just fill data into the table itself. Okay, so we'll jump into Dynamo to build our script. Um, we're using version 2.0.3. Um, I do recommend using that version as well. 2.0.2 um, at the very least. Okay, so we'll get started. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually get the directory where our log files are located. So we need to get a directory path. So I'm just gonna browse and I'm just gonna to go to that location. Um, so you just need to go to wherever yours is. In this case, I've got a log file dump. And then we need to get a directory from that path. So we're gonna feed in directory from path. And then we're gonna get a directory contents node. So get directory contents. So we feed in our directory and it's important here that we use a search string in order to filter out things that we know we're not looking for. Um, so what we use is we say, what are we looking for? What is the file format? So the format, one thing it always has in common is it has something, an underscore, and then something else. So in that case, we're gonna use that to filter our files out because ultimately that, that's the only thing that should be saved to this folder, um, except for the source to copy these. And obviously the source doesn't have that underscore. So we're gonna just use a string and we're gonna use a wildcard format. I'll just move my geometry background out of the way so it's just white space, cool. 
And then we're going to say asterisk, which is the wildcard, which means that can be anything underscore asterisk. And this way it knows to only include the files that contain that particular, particular data. Um, we can also say whether we want to include subdirectories. So in this case, we're going to use a Boolean and we're going to say, no, we don't want to include subdirectories because otherwise it would also search through the, the folder I'm keeping here where I'm putting my combined log file, which we don't want to do. Okay. And what we're going to have to do then is we're going to have to manage out a problematic file type that I've come across, which is an Excel backup file. There may not be any in this folder currently, but if I run this at this point, we should get a list of files. And sometimes at the bottom, you'll get some rogue backup files. Okay, so there's none here at the moment, but they cause a lot of problems with the script. So what we have to do is find any of those string names that contain a basically a, a squiggly symbol and, and a, um, a dollar sign. So we're going to do a string contains node. And you will need to do this as well. Otherwise, you'll run into some problems. So the thing we're looking for is um, this key up near, near the number one on your keyboard um, with shift selected. And then it's followed by a dollar sign. So that's usually an Excel backup file. And we don't want to go through those because they're a different structure to the logs themselves. And in this case, we just say ignore case is false because this is there's no case to these elements. Okay. And we need to filter by Boolean mask after that. And we're going to take the out of this. So if it contains this, we don't want to consider it. So that's going to be the in section of our Boolean mask. We, we care about the out section of our Boolean mask at this point. Um, so at this point, there shouldn't be any files. In my case, it's an empty list. But sometimes you may have a file like that. Um, I can always just make a, a mock-up of one of them and just call this a... Uh, like that. They look a little bit like that. Now you see it filters out that um, that backup file per se. Okay, so what we need to do now is actually get our, our Bumblebee data node and we're going to read our Excel data. So from those file paths, note that we're reading all the Excel files separately. Um, that's one thing that Bumblebee is capable of doing quite well and quite quickly. So we're going to set a few fields here. So we obviously do want to run it, so that's true. Um, we called the tab in this file, in, in each file register. Uh, we want to set this to false for by column. We're going by row. And our starting point is A2. We want to ignore our header row, which is um, which starts at A1. So we do want to run it. Sheet name is always register, not by column and the origin is A2, and the extent will just be set to all. Okay, so at that point, we should be able to run this script, and what Bumblebee will do is go and read all those Excel files and give us a report. It can take a little while to gather all of this data, so just be patient with it. Um, obviously, the more log files you have, the longer it takes, um, so we may temporarily remove some log files from this folder once this is finished, just to make this a quicker script to run as I train. Anyway, I'll let this finish. Uh, should almost be done. I think there's about 35 log files here at the moment. So it's having to go into all 35 and read it, read their data. And there you go. You can see that we end up with a list of data for each row from each document. So sometimes you'll see that the project uh, location is set to null. So this is when it's an unsafe project. So we need to manage that data. But what I might do first is just reduce the number of log files that we're dealing with, and I'll just cut out all but a small sample. So we're just going to put this in a temporary location. We'll just call it temp. So now we should be dealing with a lot less log files, and it should be a lot faster. It'll still take a little while, but much faster. So obviously this is a script you might want to run over lunch or something like that, because eventually you'll have you know thousands of log files. There you go. So we've got a null here that we need to manage. So I'm just going to do a replace nulls, uh, nulls node. And the great thing about this node is it works at any level. It will find the level that the null is at and it will replace it at that point. So we want to replace our nulls with unsaved document because we know that's why we're getting nulls. If you don't know what a null is, it's basically like a, an empty piece of data or the absence of data. Okay. So now if we run that, we should have the same list structure, but we'll now have um, those nulls replaced, ideally. 
And there you go. You can see that this has been this has been replaced. I'm just call it unsafe document. So at the moment, um, it's almost correct, except you can see that our list is one level too deep. So we need to put in a flatten node, and we're going to flatten down to level one. And that's so we can we can transpose our data into columns. So I'm just going to run this, and this should just transpose everything up one level. So each sublist is sitting at the same level. And there you go, you can see each sublist has moved up one level. Okay, so now we're going to transpose our data, and that's because we want to process the date time. Notice that the date time no longer has the apostrophe in front of it. Excel has actually managed out the apostrophe in how Bumblebee reads the data. So we need to reintroduce something to stop that. So we're going to transpose our data at this point, which will replace the columns with the rows. And you'll see now that we've got all our date times at the front of our list. So we need to get item at index zero. And we're going to reformat these in order to make them uh, not automatically get formatted in Excel when combined. Okay, and we want to add another string to these. So we're going to use the add node and we're just going to add the apostrophe to the end. Um, you can add it to the front, I believe, but I, in this case, I'm just going to add it to the end. I found that's easier to handle once we're in Excel because we'll actually process this data later. And what we want to do is we want to replace that item uh, so we're going to replace that item at index zero with the item that has the apostrophes added to the end. So we'll just run that again. And we should expect to have the same list, um, but instead now we'll have those formatted date times at the front instead. There you go. Now you can see we have those apostrophes, but everything else is still uh, together. Okay, so at this point we're going to write our data back to Bumblebee data, because Bumblebee has to process its own data or its own data type so we're going to take our data in this case we're going to take the origin and the sheet name so the sheet name is register and this is the data for how we're going to write our data back to bumblebee into the combined file so we're going to write to the tab called register so in your combined file you need to make sure that your first tab is called register as you can see here and we're writing to destination a2 Okay, because Bumblebee writes its data a little bit differently to how Dynamo does in its default nodes. Okay, so at that point we need to write to Excel, but we're going to write with the Bumblebee node instead. So this is different to the default one. See how it accepts Bumblebee data instead? So you actually deal with where you're writing your data to prior to the right Excel node. And one great thing about uh, Bumblebee is you can actually combine a lot of actions into one. So I can actually get other Bumblebee data like this and I can combine it together and feed it all into one action node. So you can write uh, multiple data to multiple tabs in multiple files using one node. So really powerful. Um, okay, so we're just gonna take a file path to get our combined, our combined file. In this case, we're just gonna go to demo and I've just made a subfolder called combined and our combined log file. So that's our file path. And then we're just going to make some booleans. So we do want to run it. And in this case, we don't want to go by column. We want to go by row because we've transposed our data. We could transpose it back, um, but it's an unnecess unnecessary step to go through because the node can do this for us. Okay, so at this point, we have a file or a Dynamo script that should be capable of taking those log files, processing the data from the directory, um, handling a couple of exceptions that will cause issues when we combine it, and then writing to a log file that's combined. So we'll just save this and I'm just going to run this and it should update our log file and I'll run it with all the log files after just to prove that it can handle different sizes of data. But ultimately we should, we should expect that it's going to update this file. So it looks like it's just finished and there you go. Okay, it looks like we may have to actually transpose our data. I need to just cross check my, my fields here. Just need to make sure that actually, sorry, we do need to go by column, not by row, my bad. So I'll just delete those rows and we'll run it again. Now it should go by column instead. I just used the wrong Boolean, so sorry about that.
I do like to keep errors in my videos just so people can see where things can go wrong and how I deal with them. And there you go. Um, so you can see that this is all set up and I've got a little bit of conditional formatting in here as well. So I've set up some conditional formatting rules. So you can see here that if the cell value equals unsaved document, um, I highlight my text in red. Just so when I'm reviewing the log file before putting it into Power BI, I can see just how many times it's run in an unsaved document. Because usually an unsaved document indicates to me that it's probably being tested. So I want to actually understand whether this really was a test or not. And I do have the opportunity to say, well, actually, these were all tests, obviously. So I can process that data before bringing it to Power BI. Um, but there you, can, there you go. You can see it's all come across and our date times have been formatted so that they're still in general format. We'll look in the next step about how to process those into proper date times that Power BI can handle. Uh, but really we're just protecting the format of the time without letting Excel make any assumptions about the date time format because it can do that along the way, which causes problems. So we'll just make a slightly bigger sample of files. So let's say we've been using this for quite a while and now we've gathered a lot more data that we need to combine. It should be as simple as taking these log files and say these were all my log files. And I'm just gonna refresh my script um, just to make sure it doesn't hold on to any of the original data. It shouldn't, but better safe than sorry. And really everything should be just still the same. The location of the combined file is the same and the location of the directory is also the same. So I'll just run this again. Um, it will take a little bit longer. It's important while this is happening that you don't open these files. Bumblebee does rely on these files not to be open and edited while it's processing the data. Otherwise, it will run into an error that usually calls itself a, a traceback error, which prevents the log file from properly being written. Typically, one of the rows will break and the combined file will end up exhibiting errors in its structure. So it's good to run this when you know people probably aren't running Dynamo too much, because obviously when they run Dynamo, they'll be adding files to this journal folder. You can also obviously process the data in a separate folder by copying it elsewhere and just changing the location of where you're getting your log files from. It looks like that's just finished. So we'll just check and look at that. So much data. So you can see that every single user and script and document is here. Um, so we have a, a really good set of data that we can process into Power BI. So that's pretty much the second script in, uh, in a nutshell. So on the third part, we're actually gonna look at processing this data using Power BI into visualized data sets. Um, so I think that's gonna be a pretty exciting video. I think it's a new skill set for most people. Um, and it's sort of the reason why I made this series. So hopefully you're still with me and following along. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. I hope you enjoyed this video today and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Uh, thanks, take care, bye.